Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to today's podcast. It's Cody Gotham's Cape Crusader. And we're keeping it geekly. Yes, this is your number one stop for all things geek culture, from comic books to video games and so much more. And man, oh man, am I excited because not only do we have some heavy hitting news, but we got some fresh DC comics right out the oven. And uh, yeah, sorry I'm covered in paint. I uh, started a new endeavor with painting my new 3D prints. So yeah, things have been... Uh, for lack of better words, getting pretty colorful. So uh, without further hesitation, let's just go ahead and dive right in and let's see what's buzzing in the geek world. So the very first thing we're gonna be talking about today is Amazon. And surprisingly enough, they just committed a hundred million dollars to help build affordable housing near the Seattle area. So just quoting off this article, it looks like it announced a $2 billion initiative in January aiming to create affordable housing in three communities where its rapid growth risk deepens the economic divide. And we're seeing that in the Seattle area, Northern Virginia, and Nashville, Tennessee. So we've seen this with Microsoft dropping a whopping $750 million housing initiative. And we're seeing this in Silicon Valley as well as San Francisco with Facebook and Google each pledging a billion dollars each. But Apple comes in as the top contender and just demolishes it with a $2.5 billion pledge. Now, that is an insane amount of money being pledged for affordable housing. And uh, yeah, hopefully we see some action following suit. One thing that is really stirring the hornet's nest, though, is in Singapore. It looks like new telco Gorilla Mobile is launching a new plan that is going to convert unused data to offset the bill. Now, keep in mind, while that is outstanding, there is only one plan available. That is going to be the Gorilla Switch 25, which is going to include 20 gigabytes of local mobile data, 100 minutes of call time, and 100 SMS for $25. Now, this is insane because it's one of a kind. This is the first time it's been done. And even though there's not a lot of call time, even though there's not a lot of, of data, it's still a nice feature to see this being offered. You know, if you're not going to use that data, that is going to offset your bill. And next month, it's going to be cheaper. Now, the cool thing about this is it's one of a kind. For people who really don't use the data a whole lot, it's going to offset their bill. It's going to be pretty much translated into what's going to be called Go Tokens that don't expire. So you don't have to worry about using it within a month's time that all these major corporations force their user base to do. And this is coming from someone who used to work in the industry that dealt with phones. Now, even though this is based in Singapore, only time will tell, you know, this could be something that does bleed into the United States and maybe we see other major corporations follow suit. Now onto our last piece of news, it looks like Pokemon Unite is going live in July with its arena battles. Now, while users have been waiting for this title for over a year, Pokemon Company has officially announced that it is dropping next month with a mobile release slated for September. Now, this Pokemon MOBA is going to slate five teams of Pokemon on a remote island battling for a substance known as Aeos Energy. And I think I pronounced that correctly. So it looks like users will be joining other trainers to, to formulate these teams of five Pokemon. And each Pokemon is going to start off every match at level one, gaining experience and evolving by battling the enemy's team. Now, Pokemon Unite is a MOBA that is dropping next month on the Switch and it's going to be free to play. But keep in mind, it is going to be heavily laced with microtransactions now that wraps up this week in geek but stay tuned we have those dc comics fresh out the oven so the very first comic we're going to be diving into is going to be the flash issue 771 written by jeremy adams with art being done by kevin mcguire and a ton of other artists now i say a ton of other artists because this book is just insane we see wally west currently being swept into a huge surge of the speed force and he's just thrown into the lives of various other speedsters throughout different dimensions and timelines. We first see him fulfill the, the shoes of none other than the Reverse Flash right as they're about to kill Superman. Now, it seems Wally West was thrown out of the Superman's chest into the shoes of the Reverse Flash. With some rather quick thinking, he actually saved Superman. But Superman doesn't know it's Wally West, so Superman is trying to just destroy Wally while Wally's trying to save the world. Because here's the thing. Superman is going to explode unless Wally West finds a way to take that energy out of him. And thanks to Lex Luthor, he's able to. Now, we see him transition from this to the old Wild Wild West, the year 1832. We see him transition to the Teens Academy and so forth and so forth. Every time he needs to stop and take care of this energy buildup 
before it just explodes and just ruins the timeline. Now, while Barry, Mr. Terrific, and Ali are working, we see the Flash get transported 20 years into the present where he's actually talking to his daughter and his daughter is awaiting for him. She already knew this was going to happen. And that was a very interesting twist for me, I thought. Now, the thing is, though, he has one more journey to go to. And this one's not going to be a sanctuary for him. And if you remember Heroes in Crisis, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. I wasn't prepared for that. And man, <laughs> whoo, that took me by storm. Now, another issue that did take me by storm was Nightwing issue number 81, written by Tom Taylor, with art being done by Bruno Radonado. And we see Melinda Succo get sworn in as mayor of Bloodhaven. And as she's ushered into a secret room, we see her meet up with Blockbuster. And this was a very, very interesting meeting. Now, this leads us into Nightwing leaping into the light part four. The fight between Heartless and Dick Grayson has just progressed and is just insane. There's fire everywhere. And Heartless, it looked like, was starting to get bested. So he decided to come for Dick's heart at another time. He knows Dick Grayson's weakness. So he set off an explosive on the pier that has pretty much trapped all the kids. And it's Tim Drake, the three-legged dog, and all these kids left almost burning alive. Now, all these kids are just frantic and just worried. And Tim Drake doesn't know if he's going to be able to get out. And that's when we see Dick Grayson make a rather interesting call as he makes a mayday distress signal for all nearby ships to come and help. But will these ships arrive in time? Because as you know, the fire is just consuming the pier inch by inch and time is dwindling. And that's not even the biggest twist in the issue. You guys are going to have to pick up this issue yourself and check it out. And I highly recommend it because holy crap, I was not ready for it. Now, this is going to lead us to our last issue, which is going to be Static Shock Season Issue Number 1, written by Veta Alia, with art being done by Nicholas Ivy and Criss Cross. Now, we start this issue with Virgil Hawkins reflecting on his recent fight with the school bully. Things got to a bowling point, and he unleashed some of his powers and messed up the kid pretty bad. Now, this gives us a rather interesting segue to a podcast or some sort of YouTube video where... We see this breakdown of events happen. There was these protesters and cops gassed them. And the gas ended up turning some of these students into monsters. And it caused such an immense amount of pain. And it had these students fearing for their lives. They thought they were going to die. And Virgil was one of those kids. Now, this was a really interesting point of the issue. We see Virgil heading back to school. And he's worried that his classmates are going to look at him in a different light. Now that they know that he's a bang baby. But the thing is, no one does because his friends came to his aid and made up a story. But his friends, on the other hand, they're not too pleased that he kept the secret from them. And they're worried that he's not going to be able to contain himself because he almost killed the bully. And uh, things heat up because Francis, Francis is not going to let this lie down without a fight. And he actually makes an appearance at Static Shock's house. And things end up in a fiery explosion. I cannot stress that enough. And it is a fight that I wasn't expecting for a first issue. That is going to wrap up today's podcast. Now, as you might have known, we were a little bit shorter today. And for lack of better words, I'm trying to find the sweet spot. I don't want to be going too heavy on the explanations. Uh, and, you know, I also don't want to be too brief. So I'm trying to find that right spot where it's just perfect. So let me know. Let me know in the comments if you like today's podcast, if the shorter explanations draw you to want to read the issue more. No, because ultimately, I don't want to ruin these issues 100%. I want to encourage readers to, to go to their local comic book store to pick these issues up and read them themselves and see what happens and to prepare for the next podcast. That being said, you can catch me on all my respective social media platforms at Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and so much more at Job for a Cody. And if you like this type of content, be sure to hit that big red subscription button and turn on notifications to be alerted anytime I drop new content. As always, guys, keep it geekly.